Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me on this week's Tell Us How to Make It Better podcast. Today's guest should be a wake-up call for everyone who's thinking of hiring someone to do work at their house. It's a story of trust gone bad. Katie Allaby is a single mom who wanted to make some changes with her house. Now, for those of you watching, I'm showing you some photos that Katie sent me. Instead of a nice, simple process where you hire someone, they come in and do a great job and you live happily ever after, this went completely the opposite way. Three years after trying to make her house better, Katie has a pile of debt, she can't even live in the house, and she's got a lawyer trying to help her get her money back. This is a story that is a long way from having a good ending. I'm George Siegel, and this is the Tell Us How to Make It Better podcast. Your home is probably your biggest investment, and every week we show you warning signs and solutions to help you protect it. Tell Us How to Make It Better is partnering with The Readiness Lab, the home for podcasts, webinars, and training in the field of emergency and disaster services. Katie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Now, it sounds like you have a nightmare situation. Tell us what's been going on with your contractor and where things are right now. Okay, so I'll make it as short and sweet as possible. Um, about two years ago, give or take, I had um, I had wanted to put a addition on my home um, and I hired an architect and mainly because I wanted to have what I want and not have a contract to be like, oh, well, we don't want you to do it like this. Like you should do it like this. Like basically to either for them to control the situation or, or build what they wanted to build. So I hired an architect um, and I had nobody, no idea what kind of builders or who to, you know, choose. So I asked him for a referral. He gave me a, um, this guy's name and I was like, okay, so I'll trust you because I trust my architect. We've been working for quite some time and, you know, build a great rapport. So the guy comes to me and was like, yep, we'll do all of this stuff exactly the way you want. Um, and we'll even come in 10 grand under, you know, what your, your budget was. And I'm like, oh my God, like, this is fantastic. You know, I had just had, um, it was just me and my daughters and it was, you know, just a sole income. So I'm like, this is perfect. I'm getting what I want for less than what I want. Um, and so I signed, I signed the contract and I was like, okay, let's do this. So this was like the beginning of December. Um, he had come him and his crew or whatever came over, took my siding off, was like, oh, we need to do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, fair enough. Like, let's do it. Um, and I said, I know that, that, that the town wanted a lot of work to be done in the basement first to support the second floor he's like yep we'll do it we'll do it and I'm you know I'm just going along with the whole story um so he this then we're to the week of Christmas and he's like oh we're gonna rip off your roof and you know start framing in the second floor and I said well are you gonna be able to rip it off and you know put a roof on there because Christmas is you know this weekend and I know we're getting a heavy um, hail rainstorm this upcoming week. And he's like, yep, yep, yep. I'm like, how about no? Like, let's work on the basement first because, you know, I'm, I don't want to take that risk of taking my roof off and something happening and then, you you know, not being able to do what you, you can do. So he did what he wanted. He ripped my roof off and they didn't secure the roof properly you know, whether with, I, I don't know how that you're, you're supposed to do it, but like something with tarps and whatever. Um, so what happened is we end up getting the hailstorm and Christmas day, my whole house is basically flooded waters coming through, you know, the ceiling fans. So my daughters and I had to, uh, relocate to a hotel. I called, um, the guy and there was no avail. And so, you know, we're going through, um, I filed a claim with my homeowner's insurance. Nobody would return my call with them. And I kept trying the other guy and nothing until um, a couple days after Christmas, his subcontractor came to my house and basically 
threw that contractor under the bus and was like, he's the worst. I'm the one that does all the stuff. And, you know, at that point I'm in desperation and I'm like, I don't care who does it. I just need my house to be built. I need to be able to go home with my children and, and have it be a safe environment. He's like, I'll take care of it. And, um, fast forward, you know, to two years later, he destroyed my house. He ripped it apart. This is a second subcontractor. Um, Apparently his home, his insurance is not covering anything. My homeowner's insurance is passing the box saying, oh, this is a contractor's problem. And I am left with just a foundation. I am completely, you know, maxed out. My attorney has, you know, filed suit against both contractors and to no avail. We have nothing. And like I said, this has been almost two years, if not two years, um, this second contractor has been on, you know, Channel 7 News in, in the Boston area for scamming people out of money, like taking money and then going to Brazil and destroying their homes and doing all this fun stuff. And I didn't know that happened before, <laughs> before I signed, you know, the dotted line. Um, but now I am, you know, I, I went, my daughters and I lived in a hotel for God, close to a year. And then we finally got um, an apartment. And then, you know, we now are renting a home, you know, so we can semi feel like normal human beings by, you know, living in kind of an environment that we were used to living in before this guy. Wow. Just- I mean, what an awful situation you you went through. Now, are those contractors still operating? Are they still in business in your community? Yeah. As far as I know, yes. It, the the second one actually went from my house um, to this house in Andover and then went to the lumber yard where I was paying for the lumber and said that this Andover job was my job. And so he charged about $15,000 worth of lumber onto my credit card for an Andover job that obviously is not my job. Were you able to dispute that with I your was, credit card I, company? I, I, yes. And with the lumber yard, because I had the lumber yard and I had agree, created a rapport. So they called me and they're like, this guy just tried to put all this stuff on you. Like, you know, we didn't realize it was your card when we ran it, you know? So I was able to dispute that and at least get that portion off of my um, credit card, but everything else that I paid, you know, cause he's like, Oh, you need this. Oh, you need this. And so I just kept paying it. Cause I didn't, I'm a nurse. I don't know how to do building houses or. Sure. No, no. Like what, what, what's <laughs> happened to you, unfortunately, happens to a lot of people. Um, so you did no research on the contractor. So your architect recommends this guy. Yeah. And so you trusted him. You didn't look at Google reviews or Better Business Bureau stuff. And I'm not saying that in a scolding way, just in a curious way. Did you do any investigation into this guy before hiring him? I didn't because I did so much investigation into the architect. So I was like, oh, well, this guy is, you know, referring these other guys thinking that, you know, because this architect was extremely credible and, you know, he was fully licensed, fully insured, like he was, you know, registered with the state. Um, I looked up all his reviews and everything like that. So I was just feeling that he wouldn't recommend somebody that didn't meet his stature. Yeah. I mean, sadly, we see what happens when when we put our kind of faith in that. Now, I always hear because I used to be in the television news business that there's two sides to every story, but not in situations (laughs) like this. I mean, I have contractors that would probably tell you or builders that I'm personally I'm a pain in the ass to deal with and and that I'm a a, a difficult client. But that doesn't mean the work has to suck. Right. So what I mean, this is just ridiculous. So what is your hope with your attorney? Who's he going after? Have you gone to the local media and gotten uh, TV stations involved? One of those uh, two on your side guys I or something? Tr- I else? actually tried. I actually reached out to the to the um, the news station that did that first you know, article about them. And they're like, oh, well, we have nothing you know, nothing that we can offer you. I, I don't know where to kind of direct you. And I have tried... Um, reaching out because I have a couple friends like um, that work for TV stations, like seeing it just to get my story out there because now I have no house. 
I have a foundation, a brand new foundation, which is great, but I have no house and I'm paying, you know, the mortgage on that house plus the house that I rent. I don't make a ton of money. I make a decent living, but you know, I lost my home. My daughters and I lost all of our personal possessions, like our memories are everything. And my homeowner's insurance is like, oh, it's not our fault. It's the contractors. So it, it's, it's, I'm hoping, I just want my house to be built. That's all I want. I want to be able to go back to my own home that I, I worked my butt off to get in, you know, to get a home by yourself. Um, it's, you know, it was kind of a proud moment for me, for me, just from what I had gone through before um, purchasing the home and to have these people just come in and just destroy it and have no, you know, repercussions for what they did is ridiculous. It is completely ridiculous. Now, how were you paying them along the way when you signed a contract with them? How much money was up front? How much money is along the way? Because quite often, once they get a certain amount of money and somebody's crooked, yeah. that's when things go south. So how deep were you in with them? Um, so, I mean, to date, like I've lost close to $300,000. And that was, um, so the first contractor asked for $50,000 down. I got an equity line because I had purchased the home from my mom who she had owned for like 30, 40, 30 years or whatever. So I bought it below market value, um, because it needed to have some work done. So I got a I got a big chunk um, from the equity line, and you know just kept paying, you know every the the second guy was like oh can you just pay me weekly and you know I need um, twenty five thousand down and then pay me weekly for my labor and and I was like okay like you know I know what it's like to not be able to have a money coming in weekly and everything, and so I just kept going with it because you know it looked like. He was making progress. And then the town came in and was like, this house is so unsafe because of the way that it was constructed from the second contractor that everything needs to be, um, the house needs to be brought down back to the foundation and rebuilt. So then it cost me, you know, double the money. And then that, that third contractor um, came in and met with my attorney and, you know, my insurance uh, public adjuster and was like, oh, my God, you know, people like this give us co good contract is a bad rap. And then the, that guy did the same thing. He came in and, and you know, said that he would give me biweekly invoices for the work completed. And then I would pay, you know, like um, as it was completed. And he ended up he was getting um, screwed from two other jobs you know, unrelated to mine, sent me a biweekly invoice for like 150 hours when there was nobody at my house for two weeks. And and then the third week after that, there was one guy that was there for like maybe 10 hours for the week and gave me a 150 hour labor bill. And I was like, what the hell is this? And wow. then he I mean, my job. Yeah. That, that's outrageous. And, you know, normally I hear those kind of stories with pool builders yeah. because, those guys, that's an industry that you, you hear a lot of stuff like that. Uh, we were making a TV show and uh, trying to make a pilot when I lived in San Antonio, Texas. And the guy who was going to be the pool builder in our show ended up going to jail because he was okay. going around floating one job to the other. So unfortunately, what you're a victim of is more common than we'd like to know. So when you look back on it, what would you do differently? What would you tell people? Because I could give you a bunch of steps. We we want um that's what my podcast is about, how we can avoid being victims. You know, it's warning signs and solutions for homeowners. And you you're a poster case of this tragically, of of something gone wrong. So what would what do you think you could have done, done differently? Um, I well, going forward with anything, I research the hell out of everything. And then I call their, you know, I you have to do your research. You have to do your homework. You, I am a, uh, I am guilty because I always try to see the good in everyone, and I'm the one that always gets burned. You know, my ex husband. I saw the good in him, and even though I'm a nurse and I saw all those signs, I still tried to give people the benefit of the doubt. And then unfortunately, in in the society and the world that we live in these days, you can't do it as much as you want to just give somebody a, a break or give them a chance. Like you're the one that's going to be, you know, I guess, screwed in the end. And you have to protect yourself. 
Absolutely. I hope this doesn't, I mean, I know how, I don't know how it couldn't change you because it's so awful, but you know, with the work that you do and, 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 you know, raising three kids, it's so challenging. Um, you know, I, I hope you share this with a lot of people and, and, and get your story out there because people need to know. Now I, I could tell you some of the things that I always tell people, but you don't need me preaching at you. It sounds like you have a, a lot of this stuff figured out. But what what are you hoping to do now going forward? Because you have this, it sounds like a foundation and you're you're in the hole on this project. You've gotten ripped off by contractors. You kind of need a hero to step up here. I do. And and honestly, like I, I'm not trying to like be all, you know, righteous or religious or anything like that. But at this point, all I can do is hope and pray every single day that something will break, something will help me, something will give me, you know, that little bit of help just to, to, to bring my home back. Um, I get up and I go to work every single day and I still don't become, you know, cold or, or rude or disrespectful to, to, you know, my patients or people that I meet because we need more warmth in the, in the world. And hopefully that will just be enough to, help somewhere and somehow it will come back to me and I'll get my house rebuilt, but I'm just going to keep trucking along every single day and hoping and praying that it will get better. I mean, I'm alive. And, and like you said, I have three children that, you know, need me to be as strong and positive as I possibly can. And so I just need to keep that and take it with a grain of salt for everything else. Absolutely. Now, do you follow these contractors? Are they, do they have websites? Are they online for people? I mean, I don't think we should name them here. They, people could probably reach out to you separately yeah. um, for that. But do you, are you able to have at least have left an impression publicly about the work that they did without endangering yourself, but just letting people know? Not yet. And so I, I am very thankful that I'm, I'm able to do this with you and hopefully start, you know, the, the um the spread of this I did go on to YouTube like when this first started because you know a couple of my nursing friends were like just just record videos every day of what it's like for you to go through what you're going through just to help you emotionally not for anything else except for it was helping me you know going through the fact that I was living out of a hotel that my daughters and I lost everything and and to have worked so hard to have it all re like taken from you and have no anywhere to go. That was what I felt like was the best outlet for me. Um, so I did, you know, lots of videos on YouTube, like just talking about, <laughs> you know, the ups and downs and how, how tough it was. And hopefully just continuing with those videos on YouTube will somehow some, some way help somebody not get into this situation. Absolutely. Have you ever thought, I mean, and, and you know, there's always GoFundMe and things like that, but you know, that ideally you just want justice. You know, it just drives me crazy when I see people take advantage of other people. Our homes are such personal things to us. It's our biggest investment. It's where we, our lives are anchored. And when somebody comes in and just half asses it or, or is a criminal, it's just so disheartening. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Like I just, Look at, and, and so I had lived in that house when I was a young girl. Um, you know, my mother had owned it, you know, like I said, for 30, 30 plus years. And so I grew up in that home and then she was renting it out to other people before I purchased it. And it, it was not only my childhood memories, but my children's memories that they had there. And these, these guys just came in and just stole it. And, you know, I'll never get that back, but at least you know, to be able to create new memories in that is kind of my hope. But and like I said, I'm just putting my hands and trust in everything and, and the man upstairs and hopefully something will come out of it that will help me get back to that situation. And uh, there are good builders out there. There are good contractors out there. And, and usually the bad stories are the ones that rise to the top because we're unhappy and, you know, people right. go nuts when things don't go right. And the good ones kind of are in the weeds. We don't hear about it as much. You know, an another big lesson here is when somebody recommends someone, I always say, don't go to the people that, that they recommend you talk to about that person. Try to find people that have used them that aren't on that list. Right. You know, try to find out who they've done work for 
and go by and see the work that they've done personally. But the problem is we have busy lives. And so we want to just get something done and we get anxious. And then we end up hiring somebody who who screws us over. Yeah. Yeah. And that that was basically my deal because, you know, everybody was everybody that I called, like when I went through like, you know, I want to say like the yellow pages, even though it wasn't the yellow pages, but I went through all this list of just people that I would see driving um, down the street, like just looking at their trucks and calling them. And they're like, oh, um, you know, we're booked out for like six months or nine months. And I wanted it now because, you know, at the time that I was doing all of this stuff, my, my neighbor had a got a new boyfriend who liked to peruse in mine and my children's bedroom windows. So I was like, Oh my God, this is like, I can't afford to move somewhere else. Like I can, I can only go up. Like, you know, I can't go get a house somewhere else and in another location. Um, so, you know, it was like between that and then the contractors. And I think I missed a lot of red flags during a lot of the, the transactions because I just wanted my house to be done. I just wanted somebody to come in and just do what they said that they were going to do and, you know, be able to move on with that. And like I said, I'm the one that got screwed in the end. Yeah. It'd be nice if this kind of stuff didn't happen, but unfortunately it does. Uh, Thank you so much for sharing your story. I wish you the best. I hope a lot of people see this and hear this and, and, and learn from what happened to you. It certainly sounds like you have. And You know, I hope some good stuff happens for you. You got your hands full and you deserve a break. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you having me on. All right. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, George. Have a great day. It's great to have faith in our fellow human beings. But the reality is when it comes to having someone do work on your house, you have to really know who is doing the work and have a very clear parameter of what they're doing and how they're getting paid to do it. Now, if you have a building or remodeling story, good or bad, I'd love to hear about it. There's a link to a contact form in the show notes. Fill it out, and you might be a guest on an upcoming episode. Thanks for listening today. See you next time.